Hey, tomorrow and uh, be together uh, as a church family, enjoying something a little bit different and a little bit special. We've got some folks that have prepared music tonight, and we're just going to offer a word of prayer to the Lord that he would bless all that's done. Heavenly Father, this is all for you. It's worship of thee. And Lord, uh, we ask that you'd receive our worship tonight. Uh, we want to, Lord, fall before you and to bow the knee before Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we want all that's done to be pleasing in your sight. May we have your blessing tonight. Lord, those that will perform music, calm their nerves, and may we be, uh, Lord, edified in the things of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to begin with a congregational uh, hymn just to get things uh, warmed up here. Number 121, Away in a Manger. Brother John is going to lead. Number 121, let's all stand. So confused. Think about Jesus and about how Joseph must have felt to some degree at least. All that took place on that. Son of God, 
Lord, for all my life I've been a sinful carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small. His face and hands so fair. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. But when he laughs, it shines again. How can it be? Lord, please show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be? This baby in my arms, sleeping now so peacefully. The Son of God, the angel said, How could it be? How could it be? Child. 
culture does or our country does about trying to rename this holiday the truth is the truth we gather because of Christ right? so I'm going to do a couple of traditional hymns best I can and uh, praise God I'm glad that we come from a place of victory Angels we have heard on high Swiftly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply Echo back their joyous strain Gloria Excelsis Deo, Gloria, and Excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Gloria and excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Oh, Gloria in 
Go tell it on a mountain. So go ahead. Makes me want to give out the gospel. I don't know about you, but uh, even if I have to travel via mountainside, it makes me want to preach the gospel. And I like thinking about those shepherds making their trek and going and publishing uh, everywhere as, the, as they were told, and uh, perhaps along the mountainside. And so, thank you for those songs that we've heard so far. It's been worshipful and uh, it's been honoring to the Lord, and a lot of talent within this body. And that is a blessing to see uh, that talent used for the Lord. Um, wouldn't be a Baptist gathering if the Word of God wasn't cracked open, though. And so, and so that's why we're going to turn our attention toward the... We won't be in Matthew 1 if you have a Bible with you. I understand probably not everybody does. There are a few Bibles there, and we won't be long tonight. But this is a time of the year where uh, we've got gifts in mind. And it's funny how as you age, uh, you go from being concerned about the gifts you'll receive to being more concerned about the gifts that you'll give. Uh, as a child, what am I going to give? Give me, give me, give me. What's going to be under there for me? Will everything on my list uh, be, be uh, in my possession by the time it's all over? But then you become an adult, and 
you, sort of, you worry a little bit uh, about how your gifts that you give will be scrutinized. And uh, was I, especially as a husband, was I paying attention at the right moments? Uh, did I, did I, uh, will it be received the way that I hoped? Uh, did I leave anybody out? You know, there's those people that make your list that you buy for, and there's some that are kind of like, is the relationship close enough to what I buy for them? Will they be offended if I don't give? What if they give me something? Does that mean I have to give them something? Am I kind of in limbo here? Uh, and you kind of just, you wonder, will they be disappointed with the gift that I give them, that I have given them, or will they be excited? Uh, was I thoughtful enough? And so when you when you fail, when you uh, Maybe you've been there before. Mostly guys have failed at this. Women tend to be much better, more intuitive at gift giving, but uh, uh, there are times when you get something that just was not what they were thinking, just really didn't uh, didn't come through and excite, and it's kind of demoralizing when you fail at the task of gift giving. But uh, on the other side of that token, it is so immensely satisfying when you just kind of nail one on the head. And it's just one of those years maybe where uh, you were paying attention at the right moments, and uh, the person you, the recipient of the gift, it's just, just the perfect. It's just, it fits the need. It, it's what they were thinking. It's what maybe they hoped you would get. Uh, and, and it's just a very satisfying feeling. Uh, and, and that's when the word of God is confirmed in us where the Lord Jesus said that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when you, you really bless, uh, you, you gave something that really was the perfect gift, it's a blessing. It's a blessing within you that you that is indescribable, and that confirms what the Lord told us. But the Bible uh, is all about a gift. The Bible is all about a gift. Uh, the, there's a single most important message from the entire Bible, and it's that God gives a gift to man. God has a gift for man. That is the prevailing, overriding, primary message of the Bible that this book boils down to, that God's given us a gift. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so the title for this brief message is The Gift of Christmas, because the privilege of being saved is indeed a gift. I'm saved. I've got a gift that lasts forever. It's the gift that Joseph was told about when his espoused wife was found with child before they had come together. And so I'm going to read Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 down through the end of the chapter. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was in this wise. When as, his, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And verse 21 gives us the gift here. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that was that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. That's the gift, is that he saves his people from their sins. Uh, that agrees with Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where we're, the, the word of God says that, uh, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Think about the word that the Holy Spirit caused Isaiah to use in Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a child is, is born. Unto us a son is given. Uh, he didn't say unto Mary and Joseph a son is born, a child is given. He didn't say unto Isaiah and Mrs. Isaiah uh, a child is born, a son is given. It was for us, all of us, all of mankind. And, and we understand that it, that verse certainly is speaking of Jesus Christ because it goes on to say, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he shall be called Everlasting Father, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor. So that's about Jesus Christ. He's given to us all. Uh, unto us a, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Given. That makes it a gift when it is given. So I want to just briefly give you the need, the scope, and the receiving of this gift. Number one, the need for the gift. Christmas is not about festivities. I love the festivities. I love the decorations, the celebrations, the cookies, 
the get-togethers, but Christmas is primarily about our sin. And that might not be uh, the fun part of it, but, but it's about our sin, and in our natural state, we are stuck in it. Yes, sir. We cannot buy our way out of our sin. We cannot earn our way out of our sin. We cannot work our way out of our sin. In our natural state, we are in our sin, and there's nothing that we can do about it. We, we can't get off the road to hell all by ourselves. There's nothing that we can do. And God says that, that it's just. Our, if, if our heart doesn't change, if we don't receive Christ in our natural state, our damnation is just, the Bible says. That puts us in need of a gift. If we can't earn it and we can't work for it, what we need is a gift. Our only hope to avoid that fate of damnation and perdition is that God would offer us the gift of being saved from our sins, according to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. The God of the Bible is the ultimate giver. He never guesses wrong. Every gift he gives is a perfect gift. It never disappoints. And his gift of his son to bear our sin is exactly what man needed to be saved from their sins. His gift was to take my sin on him, to be punished for me, to bear my sin on his cross and to rise again, and to win everlasting life so that he may offer it as a free gift to anyone who repents and believes. That's the need for the gift. Number two, the scope of the gift. Verse 21 here, in Matthew chapter 1, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh-oh. Who are his people? That's the Jews. I'm not one of them. I'm a Gentile. I'm not from that part of the world. And so, is that a cause for concern there? Uh, if he's only the Savior of the Jews, and ethnically I'm not a Jew, then can I not have the gift of God if this Son is given to save only his people from their sins? See, the beautiful thing about the Word of God is that the various books of the Bible do not compete with each other. They do not contradict each other. They complement each other. They supplement each other. And there, there's another primary passage in Luke, dealing with the same story of the birth of Christ. And that passage says in Luke chapter 2, we find angels uh, appearing to shepherds in their flock. And the Luke passage clarifies and supplements Matthew one twenty one when the angel says to the shepherds, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. All people. All people. Regardless of ethnicity or nationality or culture, all people have the same sin problem, need the same gift to be saved from their sins. And when the baby Jesus was brought to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord, Simeon confirmed what the angel had said to the shepherds when he picked up that baby Jesus and prayed and said, This child, Lord, is for thy people, is the glory of thy people Israel, and a light to lighten the Gentiles. He is the glory of Israel and the Savior of his people, and but it's good tidings to all people because he's also a light to lighten the Gentiles. A Gentile is a non-Jew. So we've got, uh, we've got both covered. Jews plus Gentiles equals all people. That's the math equation of Christmas right there. The math equation of the, of the whole gospel, that Jews plus Gentiles is all people, and all people can be saved, no matter where you're from, no matter what you've done. You are not outside of his reach. You can have the gift of being saved from your sins that he so wants to give you as a loving and giving father. And lastly, the receiving of the gift. An unopened gift is a great tragedy. Man can only have the gift of being saved from his sins if he'll receive the gift of being saved from his sins. John chapter 1 and verse 12, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If you decline the gift of Jesus Christ, you cannot become a child of God. You cannot go to heaven. You cannot get off the road to hell if you decline that free gift of Jesus Christ that God wants to give you. You must receive Christ. You must be born again. That is what Jesus has told us. It's imperative. And I love the Holy Spirit's decision to use the word tidings in Luke chapter 2. When the angel spoke to the shepherds and said, I bring you Glad tidings of great joy. I believe God deliberately chose the word tidings to link the story of the birth of our Savior to 
the most important chapter in the whole Bible on how to receive the gift of being saved from your sins. The gift of salvation is Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then it goes on to use the word tidings, which links it to Luke 2. When verse 14 says, well, how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear except without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of great joy. That bring glad tidings, apart part of the, the gospel piece that bring glad tidings of good things. Tidings means news. And the news that this gift is offered to you, the gift of being saved from your sins, that's what Christmas is all about. The gift of your sins being taken care of under the blood, uh, as far removed as the east is from the west, remembered no more, they're gone. Jesus took them on himself. If you've never you're not sure whether you've ever received that gift. If no one has ever taken a Bible and shown you how your sins can be forgiven forever, forever, uh, please seek me out after the service. I would love to discuss that with you and do it to have a time of explaining that gift to you so that you can receive it. As much of a blessing as it is to receive that gift, we have to take God at his word when he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I am so blessed by receiving his gift of salvation but he's even more blessed by giving it to me. He enjoys giving it even more than I enjoy having it because he is so good. Let the goodness of God be the theme that, that characterizes your Christmas this year, the goodness of God. He, he saved me and he loves saving me. It blessed him to save me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gospel. I pray, Lord, that if there's anyone in this building tonight who doesn't yet know you as their Savior, perhaps a child who hasn't gotten to the point yet of maybe understanding or just hasn't consciously asked you to save them forever, Lord, may tonight be the night that one would receive Christ. Or if not, Lord, that you begin working in that heart and preparing that heart. There are many children here tonight. Lord, you love each one. And may each one become a child of God and have life everlasting. In your name, amen. amen. At this time, our ushers are going to come forward, and they're going to light their candle, and they're going to begin on each sort of outside row, or really wherever you find people. And, and once one row gets lit, you can pass your light along down the row, and then when everyone's lit, we'll, we'll get the uh, back house light off there. But as they're coming to light your candle, I would just say that the, the darkness of the room represents the spiritual darkness of the world that's lost and dying without Christ. And the light that you'll hold represents the gift of the presence of Jesus Christ inside of you. He dwells in your hearts by faith. He takes residence in your heart. And you have that light. And as they're coming, I'm just going to read a few verses that talk about what Simeon said. That this child is a light to lighten the Gentiles. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1, 5. In him that is the word was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended oh, not. So John, 1 John 1, 4 and 5. Pardon John 1, 4 and 5. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2, 9. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I think just about everybody is lit, so we'll bring that, that light down. And I'll have Brother Alex and Melanie come back, and they're going to sing Silent Night, number 111. And they're going to sing the first three verses. And on the fourth verse, you have a, a hymnal there in front of you. I'd like everybody to come in on the fourth verse, and we'll close with Silent Night together. And then Brother Brian is going to dismiss us in prayer. When he does so, we'll be adjourned.
Yeah, actually, what's going to happen? Because uh, we're going to sing the first two verses of Silent Night, and it, Melanie and I, and we're going to ask you to do this on the fourth, okay? Because I didn't practice this third and the second. So um, I wasn't told that part. <laughs> so, uh, we'll make it work. Something that Jesse Tegel once told me, I was thinking about it when you were preaching, Pastor. And uh, he said, you know, the folks of the Old Testament had to obey the law. Their, their worship was in obedience. And people of the New Testament, that like us Gentiles and others, are here to be devoted to Christ. And it's like that. Yeah. This one there. All right. Silent night, holy night, all is come.